we did have, uh, we did put together a kind of a set of slides that uh, talks about configuring and building the code and, and so on and, and setting things up. Um, you know, you, the same sort of thing can come from tutorials as well on the web, even from the Hadoop website. So there's nothing really special in, in, in this uh, last little bit of, of compiling and so on. Um, it does uh, give examples of what we did. I, our, our PhD students sort of prepared this set of uh, just instructions. Um, and it 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 it, 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 it doesn't it doesn't talk about other other uh, you know cluster nodes in particular, right? So it's really just talking about compiling and creating the various things that are required, uh, in, you know, in order to make things work nicely. Which I might just uh, mention mention a few things actually uh, on on the on the board, uh, uh, perhaps a little bit later or as I get into what we're talking I'm still trying to figure exactly the order in which I want to say so so one of the things that you'll probably you know uh, you know you, when you test this of course you can test it on your laptop um, and uh, you know or across a, a few laptops just to get a feel for how it works um, and um, but eventually you might want to uh, you know run it on a on a cloud system on a larger number of nodes <coughs> And I thought I'd just show you um, the system that, that we use at Melbourne that's used throughout Australia. Um, it's called the Nectar Cloud. It's a kind of national, um, lead, it's a government funded national cloud infrastructure for researchers to use, right? And I have a few projects on it that, you know, that I have access to. Um, and um, it, what it allows me to do is to create a large number of virtual machines, just like running on Amazon or something like that. Does, does IIT have a, some sort of system like this? Some resources for you guys to try things out on, right? Because otherwise you try on your laptops or if you have a, if you have a computer lab, you can, maybe you can install on that. Um, but sometimes if you try that, you find that the administrators don't like you, that the fact that you're set running programs on multiple computers and it, maybe it doesn't work and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that you, you, you might have access to something. Potentially we were thinking somehow how we could provide a test bed for you guys to try on Nectar. Logistically, it's, it's not so straightforward. Um, but, you know, so... Um, all of the, the nodes that I'll show you uh, are, on, are on this system. The other, the other part of this demonstration I might add is that the internet sometimes it, I think it needs to get refreshed regularly. You know, there's a, something to do and sometimes it doesn't refresh and the internet stops working and I, the only solution I've found sometimes is to restart the laptop so I might end up kind of restarting, you know, halfway through the demo. Anyway, these are, so this sort of shows just you know, a bunch, it's actually quite a lot. So each, each row is a, is a node in the system that we have. Uh, this is the first 50 items. There's, there's actually a, a lot of experiments that we have that we're running um, for different students using the system. You know, I can launch more instances, and cr create another virtual machine, and, and create as many as what I can fill up the resource allocation that I have. Um, and indeed, some of these rows here, this DRCN master, uh, you know, this is one of the nodes that we'll use. And, uh, it, you know, this is the IP address of it. Um, some of them actually, I'm not sure all of them that we use, but some of them look like they've been relocated to Queensland, uh, another part of Australia. So, so we, we use the system to, to, to do large-scale distributed system testing, to, to deploy a uh, you know, a system that's meant to be run on a large number of virtual machines or nodes and, and test its properties, how does it work and that, that kind of thing, right? Or indeed, some, sometimes we use it simply because it's a high performance computing resource. We can get a lot of work done um, processing some things or, or, or whatever. So we can use it in that way too. Um, so I thought I'd just sort of show, you know, this is Nectar. Um, 
the the uh, nodes that this this laptop has in its etc hosts file the the, the list of um, IP addresses and and it's, there's a name for each one of them that that form part of the cluster that we'll use right so I can and you know there's there's a it's a 45 node cluster right so uh, I can um, I think I, I'm well, I, I can log into uh, you know uh, say a node like this and, and, and again so I've just sort of logged this it happens to be our main node it's the node that is running um, if I type JPS I get uh, the Java processes that are running it's the node that's running our name node it's running the secondary name node it's running the job tracker now we didn't talk about that that's for the map reduce part so, so that's doing the same thing as the name node, but it's managing the, the processes that run in the system. It's running um, a, a RAID node as well. So when we built this system, we built RAID in with it as part of the demonstration later. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll look at RAIDing and, you know, RAIDing a file um, and, and, and how that works. Um, you know, I could equally, you know, I could look at the processes on the system so these are all of the processes, and if I sort of just look at the Java processes, these are the Java processes. So there's the secondary name node process, and there's a huge command line that starts it, and then there's the name node process that was started. And, and again, you know, so so these these things, the RAID node, they're just Java virtual machines running the job tracker. There's a lot of all of this, all of this gunk is. Is, is just there's a very big command line when it runs, right? They're all the options that are given when, when the thing runs. So, so those, those, those components are just processes running on this computer, on this virtual machine. Those things, there's some confusion outside when we were talking. The name node, the, you know, the secondary node, name node, the, the, the things that we're talking about are just processes that are just running in Java virtual machines, right? That's, that's what they are. Um, and, you know, equally, um, I can, uh, let's have a look at that, that, that list again. You know, I should be able to, to log into, you know, to any of these things. Slave 13, it's this, oh, sorry, I put a space. Um, you know, one of the other nodes, it looks like the first time I've contacted it with that, like that. And, and, you know, this one's running a data node. Um, and it's running a task tracker, and the task tracker is kind of the analogous to analogous to the data node, right? So this is one of the data nodes in the system, going to store data for us. And if I logged into the others, I'd see the same thing, right? That all of these, all of these other nodes are all running a data node, which is just a process sitting there, you know, doing what it does, doing what we what we said, you know, in the previous discussion. Right. So, so exactly those boxes from the previous discussion that we talked about are now just processes running on virtual machines, um, and they're doing this, the things that we that we talked about, right? Now, but I mean, so this this cluster is kind of up and running already. You know, it's kind of there. You know, I I can I can even go to to the master node that's the DRCMS that's running the name node that has a a web service that it runs along with it, so it will serve up web requests on it on this port, and and get some information about uh, you know what does the name node know, right? So um, it, it knows that there's 27 files, and you know it's it's giving me a bit of information that it's configured. What's the total you know size of things and. The number of live nodes, so there's 45 nodes, and, and they're all in service. None of them have been decommissioned, um, and so on. Um, and I can browse the file system even, you know, through through this, you know, and and it's, so it's got a few directories. And no, we'll we'll do all that from the command line. So you know, I sort of prefer working through the command line and, and to to do the demonstration. Um, but so I can kind of convince myself that it's there. But this is already sort of running now, you know, coming back to the slides a little bit, um, 
you know, to get to that point, you've got to, and maybe if we just look at this overview, it's kind of a bit easier. You've got to obviously have Java installed and you end up creating, and it's recommended, a particular user on the, you know, to run everything as in the, in the system so that it's kind of separate from whatever user you might normally use. Now, the whole system is based on being able to SSH, so... Uh, um, well, maybe I won't draw, but, uh, you know, you, you, you have to set up, uh, you, you know, you, you, you'll end up having to, uh, maybe I should put it in presentation, uh, creating, um, you know, public, uh, private key pair that, um, the, where the private key is just put into the .ssh directory across all of the nodes that you're using so that these nodes can sort of uh, be able to SSH and run commands and so on across, across any of the nodes. So all of these nodes can communicate with each other and, and uh, you know, they, they, they can run commands initially just to start the system, just to get these, these Java processes up and running through SSH. Uh, you know, who's not familiar with SSH? Right, maybe one or two people, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a, it, or a few more. So SSH is a secure shell. It's the way you just log into a remote machine and start using it, right? It's a, it's a secure way of logging in. You type a username and a password. But if, you, but because processes don't, you don't want to have usernames and passwords, you know, stored in files. You use public and private keys you put a private key into a file, the SSH can use the private key to log in securely to another machine and run, and then your processors can do that. So you end up, you, you know, you, you'll, you'll set that up, um, and then you sort of need to build, build obviously, the, the, the uh, Hadoop. Now, some people, I think, have already built, right? Is that what have downloaded? Was that true? Or? On a single, on a single, you know, so you know, so you download and compile, um, you put in this particular directory. If you're going to use RAID, then you'll need to download um, and make sure that you had the package as well installed. And depending on what um, what things you want, it's all JIT sort of stuff, so you can just clone it, much like what the other tools that we talked about, the J Erasure and so on, clone it, put it onto your machine. Um, You'll need ant, which is just a you know package compiling program. Um, so so to do that, now these instructions just sort of talk about setting it up on a particular on one machine. What I would normally do if I you know, and what we have done is we sort of um, you know we, on the cloud we construct one machine where we install everything, compile everything and get it all set up at least generically for one machine, we then take a snapshot image of that, right? Because I don't want to do this on 45 computers, right? So I take a snapshot image and then all the other machines, the virtual machines that we start up, they just start up from the image. So they're all running exactly the same thing and, and it's like copying the whole file system, you know, 45 times over. Right, so that's the way that we would do in the cloud, and so so we can actually, you know, and indeed, you know, if you you might find, uh, you know, in some technologies like uh, um, Docker. Uh, who, who, anybody know Docker? I'm probably talking way outside of the sphere of what we. <laughs> but I mean, Docker is a is a technology where you can wrap up um, an operating a whole a whole system image with pre-installed stuff, right? It's all there for you, so it's kind of like you could you could get a, a Docker uh, image just for Hadoop, you know, like out of the box, just run it. Well, everything that you need it is installed and set up and configured already, right? So there there are other ways to to do things, um, and you know, this is a lot of interesting stuff there, but you know, so uh, so so and then so once you've done that. You'd end up, you know, potentially, you know, you could, each machine might need a little bit more configuration on a per, you know, it needs to know its ID or something like that. So there's a little bit more that you will do. Um, but we, so we've sort of done that, right? So we've got all this installed on each of those nodes. And indeed, we, we had already, the, the file system was already up and running. We could see all the processes that were there. So we'll come back here. Um, 
Now I'm going to log into the to the main node because that is where all the interesting things are. Um, now the system is installed. We put it in here. You can see indeed it, it has all the stuff that you would see have you cloned the repository and built it. This is really just the clone repository that's been built. There's a few other things. I don't know what our students have been putting in there. It's a little bit risky always using the, the as the demonstration, the system that the students are working on. <laughs> I was thinking of making my own system, you know, another system separately to do the demonstration, but it, you know, kind of ran out of time. So, so we'll use this one, it's okay. Um, and, and there's a few things, you know, that we can look at in the configuration. So, so one is, you know, that there's the list of slaves, that, you know, that, that, that need to be. So this is the, where we tell Hadoop, you know, these are the, uh, all, the, all of the data nodes that, you know. And, and again, you know, this, this machine has, you know, those things have... A, have their accompanying IP addresses in the host file. The other thing that's in the conf file, something we talked about, racks. So there's a, there's a rack topology. Have a look in here. And the rack topology is going to say for each of the IP addresses, which rack does it belong to? We have, we have three racks in this system, right? So we've, we've labeled each of the IP addresses with a rack so that the name node knows well, all of these IP addresses are part of Rack 2, yeah? So it can make a decision when it's deciding where, which nodes should the replications go on. It uses this thing. So this way you tell, you know, Hadoop, you know, that kind of information. There's probably a few other things you need to configure in here. And, uh, you know, we don't need to go through all of the little little parts and, and, and so on, maybe some things with logging, you know, log4j properties. You need, if you need to debug, if things start going wrong, you don't know why the system's work, not working, you know, um, or you don't know why it is working. I, sometimes, sometimes it happens the other way around. It's working and I don't know why. Um, so, you know, uh, so the logging might help. It's a, it's a joke in some of our PhD uh, stuff. Anyway, so... <laughs> System's not working, I don't know why. And then the same picture later, the system's working and I don't know why. Um, so anyway, so, so, you know, there's a, you know, config, you know, the other, other stuff and there's not that much. Um, if, you, if you're doing RAID, and we'll look at later, there's a few other things there that, you know, you configure. Um, so we won't look, you know, too much more there. Um, now, so let me think. Um, so, so then it comes down to so, so first of all, uh, you know, in, in, I think there's a you know there's a there's a bin directory, and in the bin directory there's a bunch of commands that you can use. Mostly we use a Hadoop command that will that will allow us to sort of be a, a client, you know, where we can you know do things that clients would do, like copy a file from the local file system to the HDFS file system and so on and so forth, and copy it back, you know, change the replication, delete files, this kind of thing, right? Um, but, you know, we, we can sort of um, stop the, stop, you know, so there's start DFS and, and, and stop DFS, right? So I can sort of say stop DFS. I, sometimes I don't like destructive demos because if I stop it and it doesn't start back up again I could be here trying to figure out why and stuff like that but you know you can sort of stop it it says stopping the name node it's stopping all the data nodes it stopped the secondary name node so we've sort of turned it off now it's no longer running if I come back here and try to load up this it's you know can't connect it's not running so it's kind of down now let's quickly start it back up uh, because and let's hope that it does because otherwise could be having another tea break. All right, so starting the name node, uh, starting the other data nodes, um, and it you know it, it gives some other information. And now hopefully I come back here. It might take a little bit. Um, we'll try again. <coughs> 
you know, to load up because there's a few things so it's sort of back up and live and, and so on, right? So as we said before, so that, you know, so, so it's, it's quite straightforward, you, you know, and it's doing the, the starting and stopping is really just through the SSH and it's, it's starting up processes on each of the, on each, you know, starting up all the data nodes and stuff like that, right? So, um, so it's quite straightforward. And as we said, so there's a, there's a file system, right? I mean, that's, that's what, uh, you know, this is all about. It's all about a distributed file system. And you can kind of look through it, you know, by, by just clicking through this web page, but, but that's not very fun, right? So what we want to do is, is you know, this, we, we can, you know, Hadoop gives us some, some ways where we, you know, we can, we can access the file system from the command line, it's the Hadoop command, right? So I can sort of, I can, you know, I, I can, I think I can do this, can I? No, I have to give a directory first, maybe. So I'll say list the root directory. So I can get the same information, you know, by, 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 you know, going through a command that's given to us called the file system command, the Hadoop file system command, and I can start to navigate my way through you know, through the file system. Whoops. Yeah, that's there, right? So now the file system command gives me a bunch of stuff. If I sort of don't give it any options, then, you know, it will give me, you know, all the, the possible things that I can do. And you'll kind of see that it has all the same sort of things that you would do on a regular file system. You know, you can you can interrogate the directories, list them. You can you can get the disk usage of files and see how you know, big stuff is, and move files, and copy files, and remove files. You do all the same sort of thing: copy from local, move from local, and that that sort of stuff, and get access to files. All right. So we'll do a little bit of that. Um, there's only a few files really on there right now that 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 are stored there. So what do we want to do? So we, we can navigate through it. So perhaps um, I will uh, copy a file onto the file system. But first of all, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make a directory to put it. I think I do like this. We'll just, we'll just do like that. And I'll just make sure that it's there. Oops, I can't do that. I wanted to do this. So I should see it there. Do I see it? I didn't see it at all. Where is it? It's not there. Okay, maybe I can't make it like that. I didn't get an error. That's uh, a, bit, uh, a bit weird. I will try this. Maybe I did it like that. Yeah, now it is there. I wonder why I didn't get an error before. I didn't get an error, I wonder where it was created, if it was created at all. These are the sort of things I wonder about. Anyway, so I've created a directory. <laughs> Anytime you type a command and it gives, it runs but gives no response, <laughs> you wonder what happened, <laughs> right? It was something happened. Right. Anyway, maybe nothing happened. So, so there's a directory there called test. So let's put a, a file in there, um, and we'll put, try to find something that's big. Uh, I had, a, I had, uh, uh, maybe uh, actually, yeah. This so this Hadoop uh, tar.gz is kind of 90 megabytes. Let's let's uh, let's copy uh, let's copy that. Uh, so. Hadoop uh, file system. Now, what, what do we need to copy? So, I'm going to use copy, copy from local. Is it like this? Is that what is that what it is? Copy from local, and and the file that I want to copy is what? It's going to be. Uh, Hadoop, we'll put Hadoop, this tarball, this, this tar GZ file, and we'll put it inside test. So it's a 90 megabyte. Now this is this is doing that read operation, that sorry, the write operation. So it's contacted the name node, 
it's got a lease, it's, it's writing the blocks, there's not that many blocks because it's not that big a file, but it's writing the blocks, but there's some sort of replication happening as well, right? So there's, there's uh, uh, some sort of uh, pipeline, right? Let's just see. It shouldn't take very long, really. If it takes too much longer, I start thinking that the network has died. <laughs> Let's just see if the network is still up. Yeah, oh, it's finished. Yeah, the network's still up. All right. See, I don't trust anything really. You know, I, I always, I, I don't. You know, I, I just, I just, you know. So, so let's just check that it's there. All right. Again, I, I always check. <laughs> uh, you know, we, you know, we, right. So there's a file there. That's now on the Hadoop file system. So its blocks have been spread out. But we want to know something more about that. This is not going to be that interesting if we're just copying files and removing them and moving them around, right? So we can find out a little bit more than that. There's, a, there's, there's something called file system check, which is uh, very much like the file system check that you might run ordinarily on the Linux machine. It, it will do various things. If I just run it without the command, you know, I can start checking the, the state of the file system. So indeed, I could run it, you know, I could just run it on the file on the file root, and it's going to tell me the total size of the file system um, in bytes by the looks of it, the number of directories, the number of files. It even gives me something about the, the well, the default replication factor is three. It's saying that the average block replication is only 1.6. Now, now it, there were some files on the system already that, that didn't have any replication on them. The file that I just put on actually had a replication of three. So, so that actually increased that. And I'll show you the other. The, yeah, we can change the replication. I think some of those other files were there for benchmark purposes. So, so they're, you know, they're, they're, they're just uh, not replicated. So, but we can do the file system check a little bit more. So, so we can do it. We can do it on, on you know, the directory test, and now, uh, does it, what does it say? It says just something about now only that subdirectory, which is about the size of what I think that the file that I uploaded, because there's only one file there. Um, and now it says actually the, the average block replication is three, because there's only one file in there, and that was replicated three times. Um, so. And the average block size is about 45 megabytes because there was one, file, one block at 64 megabytes and then the sort of the, just the remainder, right? So, but we can find out a little bit more as well. So what that was called hadoop.tar.gz. So files, I can, I can find out about blocks. I think, I think this is... All right, so now I see it's kind of giving me the same thing up here, but now it's saying a little bit more information for that particular file. It's saying that uh, what? That, that, you know, here's the first block and it's replicated three times. Um, here's the, the second block. It's, you know, it's a little bit smaller and that's also replicated three times, right? So, so I've, got, I've got that. Um, and, you know, so everything's good. Uh, but I can find out a little bit more about these blocks. So not just that they're replicated, we could, we could say I want their locations. All right, so where are they? And now I can find out that, well, here, so this block that's replicated three times is on, you know, once on that node and, and once on that node and, and once over there, right? So, so there, there, there they are. Now what I'll do is I'll just go back uh, to, uh, oh let me, well yeah, I'll go back to the uh, directory where we installed. And because in here somewhere there was the topology, right? Uh, what was it called? Was it called rack topology? I, I've forgotten. Let's have another look. Um, uh, inside the conf, right? So there's a rack topology. Whoops. So th these these are the the rack locations. Now, uh, 
let's see, uh, where did it put, so here, here are the IP addresses, so which rack is that on, so if I sort of say, uh, we could probably, maybe you see it, but if I grab it, that was on rack 3, maybe there's a command that does this for me, I'm not sure, and now this one, That was on rack one, so it's 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 pushed them now. You know what we were saying before was that uh, we should see ra either rack three or rack one. We shouldn't see rack two for this last one if it's following the strategy that that uh, you know that we said in the previous slides, right? Oops. Oh, did I spell that wrong? What did I do wrong? What? Wow. <laughs> One, two, and three. It's put them all on different racks. Why would that be? And I really don't have the answer to that question. When I asked that question, it's sort of rhetorical. I'm not going to give you the answer. I didn't expect it to be there. <laughs> So that maybe there's a different kind of strategy put in the, into the comp file or, or something like that. I would have thought that that'd be all, one of them would be two and one of them would be one or three or something like that. All right, but that's where the blocks are in which racks they are. Maybe I, did I copy the right IP address? I think I did. We could check the next one and see if that holds to that you know, on the, but it takes a little while to do and we won't, we won't worry about that. So that's the replication of those blocks. Now, this is for any file, hmm? this is for any file you want to replicate, not necessarily any Hadoop uh, program. Any file, any file that I put on this system will be replicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go back, uh, to, I'll just, I'll just run this again. So, okay, so there they are. It's a bit strange that they're on different racks. I'll have to investigate why that is. And, and you know, there might be a configuration parameter that, that we set differently. Um, so there's two blocks. They're replicated three times over. But I can change the, the replication, right? So I can sort of say, I think it's, set rep <coughs> or is it uh, oops I've forgotten let me find the command It's part of file system. Yeah, it's part of file system. Set wrap. So I can sort of say, uh, what do we want to do? Uh, we'll make the replication say, for example, only one, and then we'll say test. Uh, what did I call it? Yeah, I call it. Replication is set to one. Now I can kind of come back here and, and check. Check that. It still says replication three. Why is that? Did I get the command right? Actually, the second one says replication two. So it's kind of, is it, if I do it again, it's kind of getting there, right? So it's kind of slowly getting to the point where where it's getting some of the, where it's doing it. So now it's reduced the replication to two. Um, the default was three. I, I just brought it back to one, right? And I could go the other way, obviously. You know, I could set it up to five. And, you know, and, and that, would, that would push it back the other way. 
it's still only at one, but it, you know, so, so. Now one of them is at five, right, so. So it takes a little while to, to do that. Um, still, only one of them is at five. It's taking a while to, to, to get it. Still only one. So here it says, you know, it's giving me some information. Under-replicated blocks is, you know, 50% of the blocks are under-replicated. This is not really quite healthy yet. <coughs> right, but now it's, it's finally, it's kind of replicated them. And yeah, we could go and check where they are. You know, we only have three racks. <coughs> they are in, in very different places around Australia, those racks. That, you know, they're quite far apart. They're not just like three racks sitting in the, in the one building or something like that, right? So, you know, we can go now and sort of, uh, maybe we can kill a data node <laughs> and see what happens and, and see that, you know, that the system still kind of works. So what I might do if I wanted to test killing of the data node is, you know, um, I, I, I need to, uh, first of all, uh, 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 now we we could we could so so I want to kill so here's you know the nodes that this that this file is stored on right so what about we kill that one you know and I'll just kill it you know it's a command right <laughs> um, so so I think if we if we log in uh, to that can we do that. Does it work? Okay. So, uh, you know, and if I, um, so first of all, I mean, I guess it, this is running, the, the data node obviously is there. Is that the process number? I think it is, but um, I'm just going to uh, kind of trying to do this. So I, I guess it, 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 this is the actual process, 21871. Yeah, it is the process number. So, you know, so that's where it's stored. If I just sort of, and I'll kill it really abruptly, uh, uh, 21871, yeah? All right, oh, all right. So, so now if I, if I do this grep, there's no data node running anymore here, right? Now let's quickly go back over here Um, wow! Did it, did it replicate it immediately? Was that the that was, was that that was the one I killed, right? Has it even detected that it's dead? Is, the, is that the IP address that I just killed something on? Let me make sure that it's dead. It's it's definitely the data node's not running, and two o three and you know one two seven. So so yeah. So that was the IP address that I that I you know killed. Let's have another look. So it still thinks that it's there, right? It still thinks there's a block there. But eventually, you know, the heartbeat message from that data node, and it, it, that might be, I don't know, once a minute, I would think it would, might be a bit quicker than that, will get through to the name node and it will realise that um, that block doesn't exist. I don't know how long it's going to take to do that, but it, it's going to have to do it soon, right? It still thinks that there's, there's still a good deal of replication and it still thinks that it, it, it might be longer than a minute I'm not sure where the where the parameter is oh, oh, now it says only replication four so so it's something is detected that you know in fact that same IP address might have stored in the other block as well it might have been stored so both of them have have come down, so there's missing replicas. So it's it's sort of started to see that the something has happened, and that you know we have to we have to you know we have to do something. Um, and it's replicated something now somewhere else, I guess. Right, and you know, and eventually it. it you know, it finds that. So, so this is the kind of time scale and the and the sort of way that you know, your distributed storage system will work. When you think about the codes that you're writing, you know, this is a very practical thing, right, that the, the way that it works. And 
keep that in mind, I guess. I mean, you know, when, when, you, when you develop your, your erasure codes, because you, you need to, to detect and reconstruct, but nothing happens immediately in these systems. There's always delays and, and you know, to make things work. Because there's a lot of other things that the system needs to consider um, to make it work, right? So the whole thing has a lot of things to consider. You know, and in, in particular, the reason, you know, why there are these delays is because, you know, we want the system to, to be self-managing and self-healing and, 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 you know, heartbeat messages can't, the more that you have, the faster that they go, the more bandwidth you're using. So that becomes an overhead. So you can't have a heartbeat message every second because that puts not just on the bandwidth, you know, so I send it every second, but also the data node, if it's receiving, you know, because it's receiving them from everybody, right? Sorry, the name node is receiving from everybody. So if you send every second, and you might think, oh, well, that will make it respond faster, but you, it's a trade-off between the, the resource. The, the name node also needs to process all those heartbeat messages, so there's some CPU load as well that comes if you increase the heartbeat rates. You know, and it's not just the heartbeat message, but it's the block report, and the block report is a list of blocks known. Now, this is a very small system. It doesn't have that many files. There's not that many blocks, but, you know, if the system gets bigger, then one of the things probably you'll start doing with a, to scale the system up is you'll be increasing the period between the heartbeat messages. <laughs> Because you might find that they start to, to use too much resources, so that the, the delay between, you know, detecting the error, might might get even more right as the system gets bigger. Um, and so, I, I I don't know. I mean, these are the things we we talk about in distributed systems. You know, trade-offs in resources and scale and. Um, and that kind of thing. You know, I guess the defaults are quite okay as they are. I could probably start that data node back up and it, it might report, you know, back, you know, saying that it's got blocks, but then they, those blocks will be kind of, they're like excessive replicas and then they start getting, you know, getting, getting deleted. Can I, can I start it up maybe? Oh, I logged out, I, I'll log back in. I think I can start, start it up as, as a single um, so, so Hadoop gives me all of these things, run a DFS data node, I'm not sure, I might need to give it some, some uh, other things that I, I'm not prepared, um, but maybe I can just start it up. So it, it generated a block report, it finished, it, two blocks got processed. So this, this thing, it started and it's it, 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 during the scanning. Let's see what happens. Now these blocks have magically come back. <laughs> does, does, uh, do we see any kind of over replication? Maybe not. You know, that, that, oh, so, so something just got processed there. There's another heartbeat, I guess, and a block scanner. And eventually, you know, we might see that there's a little bit of over-replication, but the name node might have simply removed those block IDs from its, from its table. And so it's kind of forgotten about them, and it might indeed tell, you know, I, I, I would have to check, but I would think that the, if the data node reports blocks, that are not in any of the name nodes mappings, that the name node will just say, yeah, okay, d delete those blocks. They're not needed anymore. They're not in any of the, right? So that would probably be what would happen. You could imagine that would be the way the system would work, right? Um, so it's not getting confused in any way. And then, you know, finally, you know, I can sort of, uh, I, can re I can remove that file Um, what happened then? So this thing, it got some instructions to delete stuff. Kind of interesting. 
Yeah, so I deleted here. This was the name node, the data node that I killed and restarted, and it got some instructions to delete some stuff. It's kind of interesting what's going on. Anyway, so I've deleted it, and now, you know, I can just check that it's deleted. Um, whoops. It should give me nothing. Yeah, <laughs> okay. All right, so there's, there's, no, there's no files and, you know, I like to clean up, so RMR can delete the test directory. That's deleted that, you know. What happened over here? Block report, zero blocks, yeah. So there's no blocks on that data node anymore. Um, and, and then... All right, so that... So, so, so that that directory is gone. So there's, you know, um, <coughs> when you if you start using this stuff, you, you you'll find that uh, you know, maybe it doesn't work straight away. You need to debug, and, and debugging distributed systems is a lot about looking at the log files on each of the nodes, trying to understand what's happening. Maybe there's just some sort of configuration problem that you know that's that's on a file somewhere or something like that, and you you, you end up looking at outputs. When I stop this, this thing will die again if I control C. Now it's shutting down because I didn't run it as a daemon process. Uh, it's now shut down, I'll log out. So that thing died again, but I'm sure Hadoop will be fine with that. You know, it, it doesn't have a lot of blocks, but anyway. Um, so this is kind of basics of, of Hadoop, and it's really just showing, you know, the replication. I'm a little bit worried that it didn't follow the strategy of putting two blocks on the one rack. I would want to investigate that a little bit further, Google it a bit maybe and see why, um, you know, what is the configuration parameter, well, you know, maybe, you know, there are other things there that, that it optimised on or something like that, right?